Amen and good morning. Welcome to Chapel Hill's online worship. We are so glad that you have joined with us this morning. Um, before we get into uh, our call to worship and our welcoming, let us join our hearts and our voices as we prepare um, all that we are uh, to worship God. Uh, you can stand, you can sit, be comfortable, but let's sing.
blessed assurance, Jesus is Chapel Hill. I am Michelle Lott, the, the pastor here, and I am so glad that you have joined us. If you are on our email list, you will have received an email this, this week. It happened to be very early this morning. I apologize. Um, in that, you will receive a, a document that has includes our points to ponder every week. It looks like this, and it includes our points to ponder, and then on the other side, it has any announcements that we might have um, the songs that we will sing, in case you like to know that. Um, but here's the important part to me. You'll fill in the blanks. Those answers, those, the responses will come to you during the, the message up on the screen. This part right here is where you write what the Holy Spirit says to you today. To me, this is the most important part because um, it helps us continue the conversation that God begins today. Um, if you have a prayer request, please email it to Pat. You can put it in the body of the, um, in the comment section if you would like. Uh, that is not entirely uh, private, so if, uh, if you'd like, send it to Pat, and then we will email that out on Monday mornings. I believe that's all. Oh, happy Mother's Day. I even wrote it down so I would remember to say, I hope that some of you got 
breakfast in bed and maybe even now are getting worshiping in bed with, with cuddles beside you. But um, we give thanks for all those mothers in our lives, um, those who gave birth to us and those who simply raised us um, in the faith. Let us now join together in our call to worship. The risen Christ lives among us, calling us to be a blessing calling us to heal and transform the brokenness and the violence of our world. The risen Christ lives among us, calling us to be a blessing, calling us to seek out the lonely and the lost and those who need to experience God's love. The risen Christ lives among us, calling us to be a blessing, calling us to be disciples to the world, blessed, healed, and filled with joyous good news. Let us pray. Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, we come to you in prayer today longing to see and sense your presence in these uncertain times. We pray for your world as we seek to understand and find a way to stop the spread of COVID-19. Guide the leaders in our government, in governments around the world, and in the health officials as they make exceedingly difficult decisions in the days and weeks to come. Lord, we pray for the farmers and the people of Africa, healer of the world as they are experiencing a second larger surge of locusts, which is affecting our brothers and sisters in Kenya, Yemen, Somalia, Ethiopia, and other nearby countries. Here at home, Lord, we, we pray for justice following the killing of Ahmad Arbery, a 25-year-old black man who was simply out for a run in his neighborhood. On this Mother's Day, Lord, we pray for his mom, for all those who love him as they grieve. May this tragedy bring light and a swift end to the racism and discrimination which plagues us all in every country of your world. Lord, even in the midst of this suffering and heartbreak, this weekend is a celebration of mothers and mothering figures in our lives. It's a, it's a weekend of celebration for many students who are completing their studies under very strange circumstances. Therefore, O oh God, we offer these prayers as well. We come to you today, O oh God, honoring the mothers in our lives, those who give us life, those who nurture us, care for us, love us, and guide us. We pray, Holy One, for women who cannot or choose not to have women of their own, women for whom this day sparks pain, grief, and loss. We join our hearts and minds in prayer, Lord. We ask that you comfort the sufferers and, and you offer companion to the lonely. To all those seeking your peace and mercy, your presence and comfort, we pray for all of those of us who grieve. We pray for the sick and the hurting. We pray for those who care for them. We pray for the poor and the oppressed. And we pray for the advocates who speak for them. Oh Lord, we celebrate those um, who recently or will soon graduate from high school, college, uh, from all the schools, that they may feel you at work in their lives, that they might stay safe during this time of celebration, and that they might find joy and purpose in their future. Guide us, we pray, so that we may do your will today and every day. Form us into a healthy, vital, growing uh, church, and, and each of us as followers of Jesus Christ, join together in purpose and in vision, united in our search for a deeper relationship with you. Mighty God, may all this come about, empowered by our salvation through Christ and guided by the presence of your Holy Spirit. And all your children pray together the prayer your son taught us. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Once again, I had a lot of fun with the children on Thursday, and um, so enjoy our time together. Mm -hmm. 
about the le- this, this book in the Bible called 2 Timothy where, where Paul was writing about how, how he had to do all the big jobs all by himself. And we were talking about some of the things that we have to do, the big jobs. And so Aubrey was talking about how she has to clean up all the dog poop in the backyard. And you kind of wish you had someone help you do that, right? So do you guys have to... And, and then we talked about how sometimes we have to go clean our bedrooms. Do you guys ever have to clean your bedroom? Sometimes. Yeah? Yes. And, and do you wish that you had someone to help you do it? Because then it goes faster, right? Yeah. My aunt. Yeah. Yeah, your aunt helped you do it, right, Aubrey? And I have a little person. And, 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 and Jesus in him. his room. What, what did you say, Jay? Jesus in his room. Jesus is in his room? Jesus cleaned his room. Jesus cleaned his room? I bet he did. I bet he did as soon as his yeah. yeah, So anyway, so so he was kind of like fussing a little bit because he had to do everything by himself. But then at the very end of the letter, he says thank you to some people. And, then, and he talks so, about the people that did help him. So I wanted to ask you guys... Who are some of the people who have helped you learn about Jesus? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call you guys, and I'm just going to go down my list of people the way you're on my screen so that we can hear everybody. So, Aubrey, who, who has taught you information about God and Jesus? My aunt. Your aunt has Aubrey? Okay. Who, Aubrey? Who else did you say besides? Miss Ruth Ann. Miss Ruth Ann. Okay. Oh, cool. Thank you. Ogle family. Okay, you said your grandpa has helped teach you about Jesus and God. Mm-hmm. Who else? Mom. Your mom. Okay, Cheyenne. Myself. You taught yourself? How have you taught yourself? I haven't taught myself. Um, sorry. In the last, before I came here to Texas, I was going to church by myself with nobody by my side. And okay. I read the Bible every night. Before but that. there were people at that church, though, that helped you because they were speaking and they were leading worship and things like that, right? Yeah, but I don't remember the names because I went to so many different churches. That, yeah, that's fine, but they taught you. There were all those. That, I mean, that's that's a really impressive story because there's all these people that didn't know you and they still taught you. That's awesome. All right, what about you? Miss Ruth Ann? All right. Connor and, and Charlie, who who has taught you guys about Jesus? My mom and my friend. Your mom and my friend. Mm-hmm. Down here. Yes, Jay. Who has taught you about Jesus? Miss Ann. Who? Miss Ann. You. Oh, <laughs> you're so cute. You're so sweet. Thank you. And your mom and Miss Helen. <laughs> I gave you a kiss. Yeah. She's done a good job of that. Who else? Okay, while you're thinking, I'm going to ask Charlie because he just thought of somebody. I mean, not Charlie, Connor. Sorry, Connor. Miss Ruth Ann. Miss Ruth Ann. And Miss Rose. And Miss Rose. And Miss Rose. That's absolutely right. Eliana? My grandma taught me like one story about God. Yeah, and if you remember one, I bet she's told you a bunch more than that. Y'all yeah. did a great job on your acrostics. They I were so them. good. They were really, really good. The church loved them. All right, let's pray. Everybody, let's see if we can make this work. Dear God, Dear God, Dear God, Dear God we thank you so much. Thank you so much. Your son, Jesus, who loves us. And teaches us and teaches us how to live. How to live. Help us. Help us to be thankful. To be thankful for all of our teachers. For all of our teachers who teach us about you. Who teach us about you. 
and help us and help us to teach others to teach others we love you we love you amen amen Almighty God, we ask that you come into this moment and fill our hearts and our minds. Uh, be in me, Lord, and so fill me that the, every word I speak is true uh, to your word and to your spirit. And Lord, act as that filter between the words spoken and the words heard, so that we hear what it is that you want to say to each of us, so that we may be transformed. It's in your son's name that we pray with faith and trust. Amen. So I can feel uh, Paul's pain. That pain that we can sense when he writes that his friends have deserted him. That he is all alone as he sits in prison. And of course, I'm not sitting in prison. Um, and, and I'm connected to my family and to my friends through calls and texts and emails and 
FaceTime calls and Zoom calls and, and even the magical, spontaneous grocery deliveries that bring me guacamole and ice cream. And yet, as the country begins to open and as protesters are storming their capitals with, with guns and shouts and as anonymous letters are being delivered, as people argue about the origins of the pandemic, I can sometimes feel threatened and abandoned and isolated in ways that I didn't when we were uniting in appreciating the medical professionals and, and uh, sheltering at home. In the beginning, we, we didn't love it. You know, we struggled with everyday activities and, and yet somehow we felt more connected. Um, in many ways, we are more isolated and divided now than we were before. I've watched and listened to my teacher friends grieve as they packed up their uh, classrooms without the normal rituals uh, with their students. I heard them mourn the fact that they wouldn't be able to send off their oldest students on their next grand adventures. I watch the news and social media and I, and I see the conflict between those who, who want everything to go back to normal without any restrictions as quickly as possible and those who want to hold on and, and to protect the most vulnerable for a little while longer. I see the conflict between those who think that COVID-19 is a hoax or a planned event and, and those who think otherwise. I'm watching the rhetoric increase and the tempers that are getting between people who once were friends. So I can read these words of Paul and I can recognize that emptiness and that loneliness that, that comes from watching friends go in different directions. Loneliness can be felt even more acutely when we feel as if we've been emotionally abandoned. As things change in the country, um, our relationship with God, our relationship with our church family, and the connection to our ministries are even more important than they were before. And so this is Paul's greatest pain in today's passage because he's been imprisoned many times. He has been beaten. He has been persecuted almost constantly since Jesus said, Come and follow me. And he started down that journey. Paul isn't hurt or frightened because he's been arrested and is in prison. That's just normal for Paul. Paul is weary and feels as if he has been abandoned by everyone because no one was there for him at his trial. In his lonely cell, Paul thinks of everyone who has deserted him. He mentions Demas and Crescens and Titus and Tychicus and, and then especially Alexander, who, who didn't just desert him, but actually did him great harm. It almost seems, though, as he's making this list, that it didn't matter to Paul in that moment why they left him. And, and because no matter what took them away, Paul was still hurt that they weren't there with him while he was going through this. And when we look closely at those names and some of the, the things that he says um, in relation to them, and, and we put that in context with what we know about Paul and, and the people he did, had, uh, was in ministry with, we see, see that most of these men were in ministry with Paul. And at the time that Paul is writing this letter, they're actually still busy. Titus, Tychicus, and, and, and maybe even Crescens, we're not really sure about him, they're all starting and strengthening these new churches that Paul helped to form. They're doing the work of the Lord. They were doing those very things that Jesus commanded them and that Paul had trained them for. Every time I read this passage of scripture, it makes me just a little sad. My heart hurts for Paul in his loneliness his isolation, his imprisonment that goes far beyond the prison doors. But I see in these final paragraphs of, of this letter to Timothy, not only his loneliness, but also his lifeline. Because 
Paul says in this letter that he has Luke with him, and he's writing to Timothy, and he fully expects Timothy to be able to swing by and pick up Mark to come and visit him. There are three people right there that he can for sure depend on. But he also reveals in this conversation and in the next few verses, he reveals these other friends that he has made along the way and, and who are enough of a friend that he ha they've been holding on to his winter coat at one place and to all of his books at another. And if you've ever known and loved uh, someone who knows and loved books, you know what a, um, what a burden that might have been. And still another who had all of his parchments. I love this part of Paul because it reminds us that it is important for us to reach out. Pat, can you get that one for me? All, all of a sudden it's not working. It's important for us to reach out to our brothers and sisters in faith when we're tired and still trying to do the work of God. This was true of Paul and it's true of us. There's a standard rule in churches that I have found to be true at all seven of my churches, and that is that 20% of the people do 80% of the work. That is, it's just a, a real thing. And when one is part of that 20% and working in several different areas of the church, it can feel as if we are all alone and the weight of the church is on our shoulders. And when we begin to feel as if an entire ministry will fail if we don't show up. When we feel as though no one cares that we're working ourselves to the bone to keep a ministry going, then it is imperative that we follow Paul's example and that we reach out to others in the church. Sometimes we're the 20% that needs to reach out and ask for people to join us. But sometimes... We need to hear the invitation to step into ministry and walk alongside our brothers and sisters. Sometimes we're Paul, but sometimes we're Timothy or Mark. But always we are being asked by God to do God's work in and through God's church. Always, every day, with every breath. Whether we are the tired one needing help or the very busy one who is being asked to step up, it is important that we keep our eyes on the one who calls us. Paul does this immediately following the scripture that, that Cheyenne read for us earlier. Because after listing everyone who has left him and even betrayed him, Paul writes these words. In uh, 2 Timothy 4, 17 and 18, Paul says, But the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was delivered from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To God be glory forever and ever. Amen. So this seems to kind of hit the reset button for Paul. Because as soon as he finishes this prayer, um, as soon as he finishes his praise for God and he says amen, his whole attitude changes. And, um, and he goes on to finish out the chapter with, with an awareness of the people in his lives, those with whom he is still connected. So the rest of um, the second letter to Timothy says, Greet Priscilla and Aquila and the household of Onesiphorus. Erastus stayed in Corinth, and I left Trophimus sick in Miletus. Do your best to get here before winter, because they were bringing his heavy coat, so I think that's why it was important, but maybe it was another reason. Eubulus greets you, and so does Pudens, Lydus, uh, Linus, sorry, Claudia, and all the brothers and sisters. The Lord be with your spirit. Grace be with you all. So as soon as he recognized uh, that God had gone before him and would, and would, would still take care of him, all of a sudden um, he saw with hope all those people 
um, who, were, who were at work in his life, who loved him and knew him. And our current experience of wondering if, if the government has waited too long um, and we have taken too much of a financial hit um, before the reopening, or, or if we are wondering if perhaps the government um, is opening everything up too soon. In our concern over the financial sustainability of our church, our concern for the health and safety of, of those we love, perhaps our concern over the loss of a job of our, for ourselves or, or for someone we love, in the midst of, of all of this, we can be like Paul um, and list the many ways that we feel abandoned and imprisoned. And those are very real concerns. And, um, and naming them is often very helpful. As long as we don't stay in that place, as long as we don't stay in that mindset. Our third point to ponder is that when we get tired of or overwhelmed, by ministry, we are encouraged when we remember what God has done and will do. God encourages us. God helps us to keep going. We see this happen throughout all of Scripture. The people tell themselves, remind themselves, and tell their children about what God has already done to, um, to, to help them stay safe and get where they are, and, and that that God, that, and that because of that, they can have faith that, that God will always provide for us, um, always care for us. So it's important as we continue to live through these uncertain times that, that we remember that our God is never uncertain. Just as God has been faithful and provided a way for us in the past, God will continue to be faithful and provide a way. Brothers and sisters, it's important that we, we not only remember what God has done and what God will do, but that we proclaim the good news to the world. Our words matter, and the way that we say our words matter. In these days of growing political conflict and, and physical uncertainty, people of God must be hyper-focused on how our words and our lives speak of God and how they impact the world. Whether you are speaking to a person directly or writing an email or a letter or posting something on social media, consider if you are sowing seeds of, of hope and love and faith, or are you sowing seeds of discord and distrust? We are living in a time of upheaval and concern, and we are called to be the light of Christ in a dark world. It's important that we as Christians work towards justice in the world. It is important that we as Christians call out those things that are not right, that aren't in line with what God wants for us. And yet we do so as those who have the Holy Spirit living within us, wanting to breathe life and hope rather than condemnation and, and screams. We are called as believers of Jesus Christ to live in such a way that one day, like Paul, someone may write um, about your ministry with thanksgiving. This is happening in mighty ways already. Um, today is our final Sunday in our Stories from si um, Isolation Sermon series. Um, we're going to start a, f a, a, a series coming up that's going to be about launching and rocket ships and things like that. But, but we're right now we're in this moment of stories of isolation. And we have heard Paul's story of isolation. And, and just like Paul, we may... Um, we may hear and experience what is going on. Um, we might, in our case, hear the scary stories on TV and, and, and be concerned about the financial situation of the church. But, but in our time of isolate, isolation and social distancing, we have to remember that God is working. Not just remember, but celebrate. That God is working through the people of Chapel Hill to do the work of the kingdom. 
So I started thinking, and just in a few moments, I've thought of so many different ways. Um, I thought of the fact that just this morning, Theophilus and the Children's Sunday School met via Zoom, which is um, exciting that these groups get together, get to be together and, and see one another. And you can see how much fun the kids are when they get together. We have so many people in our congregation who have been sewing masks and offering them um, to people, not only in our congregation, but to people in other organizations. We have a whole group of people who are calling um, people who are even more isolated than most of us, those who are potentially isolated all the time, calling them and checking in. We have people who are writing letters, sending letters of encouragement, letters of thanksgiving, um, letters that just remind people that they are known and they are loved. We have people who are going shopping, not just for the pastor, but for others. Um, I, I remember back early in the series, um, the sermon series, I got a beautiful email from um, Allison Wyatt about the ways that, that um, this whole uh, situation has allowed them to be in ministry to their neighbors, to people who not only can't get out to go grocery shopping, but who are in a financial strain. And they've been able um, to help by buying and delivering groceries. Um, she also writes these beautiful letters of encouragement. Um, so, so many ways that people are already at work in the world. And, and there's groups of people, there's little pockets of people who even now are planning um, how to do new ministries or how to do ministries that we've been doing in new and vibrant ways. And this is awesome. And I am sure there are so many more things going on um, than even what I've listed. And that being said, God still has more in mind for us. God, um, there is far more that God wants from us. So it's time for us to, to literally and figuratively look around and, and try to understand what it is that God is wanting to do, even as we are socially distancing and somewhat isolating and barely getting out there. What is God asking of us to do? How is God asking us to step into new ministries? How is God calling us to not be a, a church where 20% do 80% of the work, but that 100% give everything God wants? Our final point to ponder is a question, and, and quite often this question is one for us to just walk away with and think about. But, but today, this, this question is, is actually a springboard. Think about who you already have a, a network with, those people that you are in contact with um, over the phone or text or whatever, or in a Sunday school with. You've already built these little networks. How can you work with those people, much as Paul did with his people, so that um, you can do new ministry, so that you can get the work done? Um, you have networks in place. How can they be used for God's design for Chapel Hill. God calls us to be the church. That's our job. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give thanks for your word, your word that shows us it is okay to grieve, your word that shows us it's okay to bring to you our, our concerns and our isolation. And yet the very same scriptures that tell us that there is work to be done even when we feel imprisoned. So release us, Lord, from whatever binds us so that we can truly be your people in your world. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, help us. Help us bring your kingdom. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Now is when we normally respond to God's word and God's presence in our lives through our offering. And you are invited to take part in that. You can do it um, through the PayPal that's on the church website. Uh, there is a, a fee that's affiliated with that that comes to the church, not to you. Uh, you can send a direct check. Pat is in the church office on Mondays from 9.30 9 to 11. And, um, and it's a safe drop-off. It's kind of like a drive-by. Um, so any of those ways um, work. If you have any questions about any of... And they can pick up an upper room. And you can pick up an upper room. Those are available as well. 
Um, so let us pray over our offering. Almighty God, um, we ask, Lord, that you open up our hearts and minds, that you help us to see how it is that we can continue to be your church, um, offering the gifts that are yours through this church so that your, this church can be your people in this area of San Antonio and in the world. Bless our gifts, Lord. Um, multiply them and give us wisdom. Help us to see the new ways that you are calling us into ministry even now. We pray all of this, Lord, trusting that you have called us, that you send us, and that you have a plan. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Just a couple of quick announcements before our benediction and our final song. Um, if you are interested in being a part of the Theophilus Sunday School class, even if you go to another class, um, while we are um, not meeting on campus, this would be a great way. They would love to have you uh, plug in with them. Um, if you want to join with that or have your child join in as part of the Children's Sunday School program, if you will send Pat your email address, then she will send you the link um, for those classes. Um, we would love to have you join that. Um, I think that's all my announcements. Yes? So um, hear now this blessing and this benediction. Brothers and sisters, we are never alone. God is always with us, supporting us and empowering us. And we are always connected to our brothers and sisters. And our sending forth, our commissioning, we are called even now to be disciples of Jesus Christ who work for God's kingdom, to heal the hurting, to fill the needs. So let us stay in place, go out into the world wherever it is. Let us speak words of love and truth and reflection of who God is and help us to meet the needs. In the name of God, following Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
through it all.